And here are some of the hurricanes that had the pleasure of welcoming the Italian air races to Britain. The squadron leader who led the action had already had considerable practice in disposing of enemy machines. You'll notice the swastikas on his plane, 21 of them so far. Our visitors kindly brought many souvenirs with them, tin hats, cheeses and bottles of Chianti. Possibly they anticipated a long stay here. Why the tin hats? Well, helmets are handy if you're out after dark on the ground. Anyway, these are the men who dealt with the Italian bombers and fighters. In the words of one of them, it was the best party he'd ever attended. The people of Burma, who subscribed so generously for the machines of this fighter squadron, must be delighted to know how well it has done in combat against the enemy. Squadron leader Stanford Tuck, for instance, has received the DSO and the BFC and BAR, a pretty hard record. from battle. The enemy have been driven off and, as usual, several of them destroyed by these hurricanes of the Burma squadron. Count the swastikas on that plane. Squadron leader Tuck has some 26 Huns to his credit. During a two-day tour of RAF stations, the King held more than one investiture. Group Captain Primrose received the CBE. And squadron leader Tuck the DSO and the bar to his DFC. He's brought down nearly 30 Huns. Did you realize at the time how significant a part in the war you were playing? Oh yes, I think so. The, uh, the pilots that had become leaders by this time, that's to say flight commanders and uh, uh, squadron commanders and wing leaders, like myself and many of the others, um, by this time we, we were fully trained and we'd been through the training programs in peacetime year after year, and I think at this stage we did know that it was pretty well make or break when we were seeing these large enemy formations uh, every time we flew very nearly. Uh, we were well aware that this was the big show. Did you respect the German pilots? Oh, indeed, yes. I had the utmost respect for them always. So much so that... Uh, one would never underestimate one. Never underestimate one. Many great mistakes have been made like that and some poor chaps have cost them their lives, but... Oh no. They, they were good. Did you hate them? No. I never hated them. I... I... Uh, realized that I got to shoot as many of them down as I possibly could. Um, my wing and all of us had. But there was never a personal hate because his air combat was a very impersonal thing. Did you know some of the pilots by name? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, we, we knew who were their big leaders and things like that. Oh, indeed, yes. Have you ever met any, any of them since? Oh, many of them. Many of them. One, General Galland, uh, in particular, General Lady of Galland, he had the Messerschmitt wing at saint Omer in France when I had the Biggin Hill wing of Spitfires. And... Uh, we used to mix it quite frequently, although, of course, we weren't aware that it was each other. But we used to mix it quite often over France and the Channel. And then, of course, after the war, I met him, and he was sitting here in this chair where you are a few weeks ago. I was going to ask you, did you fear death? Well, I think, yes. I think one always feared death, but not in a, um, the actual thing of death. The, uh, I know I was always very, very worried when I thought about it. Uh, of being shot down and trapped in the cockpit of flamer and that sort of thing where you couldn't get out. But the actual thing of dying, I don't think one was worried about. But how one died, I think, was... <laughs> I expect a lot of people thought about it. I did, anyway. Against a delightful rural setting is a typical family group, with the father showing his two sons how to shoot straight on a miniature range in the garden. And this father knows a great deal about shooting, but a target's more elusive than electric light bulbs. To prove our point, let's introduce Wing Commander Stanford Tuck, DSO, DFC and two bars, Battle of Britain pilot, who alone shot down 29 aircraft during the last war.
pilot bails out and a parachute mushroom to give us a handy introduction to the story for after the appalling dangers of war a man is entitled to peace and quiet and wing commander tuck has achieved just that through the unlikely medium of mushrooms this is a large-scale commercial venture carried out on a four and a half acre farm at eastry in kent the enclosed mushroom sheds themselves cover a whole acre onto a tray of specially prepared compost, which has been pasteurized for 48 hours at a temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, goes the mushroom spawn. Each of the 26 crops a year requires great care. For instance, the disinfecting of sheds and trays after every crop. It is fitting that the hand with the firm but gentle touch, which so skillfully piloted wartime fighter aircraft, should now be engaged in an equally skillful but far more peaceable task. It's a pity Hitler didn't think of it when he was still a corporal. <laughs> <laughs> 